The million dollar body method will be the last diet you ever need. Nate Palmer is a fitness and nutrition expert, coach, speaker, and writer who believes that being in incredible shape gives a massive advantage in business, focus, and relationships. He is also a dad, a husband, and the number one best-selling author of The Million Dollar Body Method and Passport Fitness. As I'm sure each of you realize, this is a hot topic and probably has always been a hot topic. And I am so excited to have Nate Palmer as my guest today and look forward to what he is going to share with us. Have you ever felt like giving up, quitting, throwing in the towel? Welcome to Never Ever Give Up Hope featuring Carol Graham. She's an author, health coach, and motivational speaker. Backed into a corner multiple times in her life, Carol shares with you stories on how she overcame some of the toughest obstacles a person can go through in life, but refused to give up hope. Rather than admit defeat, an opportunity was presented, and it involves each and every one of you. Carol will feature spectacular guests who will share their messages of hope, encouragement, and their inspiration to prove why life's adversities only make you stronger. And now, welcoming the host of the show, here's Carol Graham. So pleased to have Nate Palmer with me today. And as I said in the beginning of the show, this is definitely a hot topic and always has been and probably always will be. Nate is going to probably approach it from a little different perspective than what we are used to hearing. And I appreciate that. Welcome, Nate. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for having me on the show. I'm really pumped to be here. Good. Let's start with your backstory. At what point in your life did you realize the necessity of a lifestyle change or anything else you might want to say as far as the backstory? Well, it's kind of an embarrassing story, to be honest with you, Carol. So I got into fitness early on because growing up, I wasn't as strong as I wanted to be and I was unhappy with my body and how I looked. And I think a lot of people can resonate with that. But it all came to a head for me one day when I was 15 years old and this girl I really liked, Christine, uh, started talking to me and asked to see my arms. Uh, you probably see where this is going. <laughs> so I was like, sure. Yeah, Christine, yeah, check these guns out. You know, look at the pythons. And she she turns to her friend and goes, see, I told you his arms were smaller than yours. And I was like, oh my God, I'm 15. I'm in high school. I have to just, I have to uh, complete, I have to move schools. I have to completely burn down my house and start over somewhere else. So at that point, I was like, never again. I'm never going to like feel that feeling of inferiority, that sort of thing. So I started getting into fitness because of that. And I had some success, but I had tried all the workouts. I did the boot camps. I did the P90X. I did the personal training and hit, And they didn't really work for me. So I even tried a bunch of different diets. I did keto. I did paleo. I tried counting macros. And at the end of the day, I just felt more defeated and annoyed. So I still wasn't lean. I was always tired. I was dragging. But I wanted it so bad, Carol, that I started working at a gym as a personal trainer and got into that career because I was like, I just want to inundate myself with this, figure out what it takes to be successful. But it got to the point where I was working like 16 hour days. Training training is crazy because you work at like 6 a.m. until 8 p.m. And you have this little like three hour block in the middle that no one trains, like 11 to 2. But then that all changed for me when this online magazine approach me to write an article that wasn't specifically for weight loss. They were, they wanted me to focus on how to have energy all day long, which honestly I was surprised about because I had never talked or written or anything about that before. And it never really crossed my mind, but I said, yes, cause I, at that point in my career, I was like, I'll do anything for exposure. What happened next kind of changed my life. I started researching for this article about how to have energy all day. And what I discovered in some of these scientific papers was completely different from what a lot of the gurus at the time were yeah. preaching. And it was different from P90X. It was different from all the workouts that you see on TV. And it was a very interesting way of eating and getting lean. So I compiled all the research and I published it. And to my surprise, this article blew up, it got super popular. Everyone was talking about it, like gotten some good, some good retweets and stuff. I was like, I was like, am I famous now? Uh, side <laughs> note, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not famous. But wouldn't you know it, once I started implementing some of these changes in my own life, I started to have way more energy mm. and my body was changing 
a lot faster and easier than I had ever seen before. And I didn't have to track every, like all every calorie I was eating or eat every three hours or do some of these other annoying things that was kind of like common knowledge at the time. So through this opportunity, I stumbled on this amazing framework, which was way easier than anyone had ever told me that it could be. So I had complete control of my energetic state. I could drop fat on demand. It was incredible. So once I figured it out, it became my mission to help other people do the same thing. For example, I, um, I had this client here in Arizona, which is where I'm from. His name is Jason. He's an entrepreneur and a dad. He had four kids and one on the way. And he was building a business as a roofer here. And he had the same problems. He was trying to lose fat. He had no energy, no time to work out. So he hit me up for some for some help at about like he's like, man, I just need to lose, I just need to have more energy. I get home, I crash out on the couch, I don't play with my kids, my wife notices, it's a, it's a whole thing. And I was like, dude, you gotta try the MDB method. So he did. And within two months, he told me his energy was off the charts. <laughs> he didn't have to be he didn't have to be drinking three monsters or Red Bulls every single day. And then he was like, Oh, by the way, I dropped 22 pounds in the last two months. <laughs> and I was like, holy cow, like we might be onto something here. So he's just one of one of the like the over like probably like kind of touching eleven hundred people I've helped with this method so far. So I'm just trying to spread that word about this method to as many people as I can, which is why I'm I'm here today and I'm super excited to be chatting with you, Carol. One thing that you said that I thought was interesting, and we're we are going to talk about mindset later in the show, and that is it was a criticism that turned into a positive that changed your life. Instead of saying, who do they think they are saying that about, you know, when you were 15, you know, you know, why would she say that? And and instead of taking it as a negative, you turned it around. And that is basically the premise of this entire show. Never giving up hope, but seeing hope and change is possible. So I thank you for sharing that. Anything you want to expound on that? I mean, I think that like in fitness and in this community, you see a lot of people who have are still struggling and have that kind of that fear based response. Because like, I'll be honest with you, it wasn't like I she said I had skinny arms and I was like, you know what, I should embark on a self improvement journey. I was like, who does she think she is? (laughs) Why would she say something so hurtful and yet so true? You know, like I had all those feelings. But it was it was kind of in the process of the journey, Carol, because it's been Mm. almost 17 years for me Mm -hmm. since then that I was able to take that, like that kind of running away from fear response and channel that into a more of a pursuing something that's excellent. So, and I think that transformation is critical to, you know, sustaining this, having that longevity with, with whatever your, whatever your, your story is, whatever the skill set you're working on is, but you can't always be running away from something. You have to kind of turn it into a positive, just like you said. Excellent. Thank you for that. So you did send me some things that you would like to discuss and let's just go through some of them because all of them are important and the first one which I really appreciate being the first one because it's about breakfast why is breakfast truly the most important meal of the day and how does it improve your performance across the board that's a great question Um, and I think that a lot of people have questions about this because if you walk down the breakfast aisle at the store like what do you see Right. It's it's colorful. Yeah. It's pop tarts. It's toast. It's bagels. It's muffins. It's pastries. It's cereal. It's all these high carb, high sugar foods. Uh, and then uh-huh. you have some people who are like, hey, you need to skip breakfast. You just need to do intermittent fasting. And so it's like, well, what should I be doing? It's it's very confusing. But through this method, what I was what I discovered is that if we have all these carbohydrates, these high sugary foods in the beginning of the day, it completely destroys our energy and our cravings and our like our right. bo- ability to listen to our body for the rest of the day. Right. So it's this whole process of these hormones called ghrelin and leptin, blood sugar and insulin working together. But if you basically spike your blood sugar early and then it drops down, that's when you get that 1030 hunger signal where you're like, dang, I just ate, mm-hmm, but like mm-hmm. I could go for half a donut, right? You know, we need like 18 blueberries, but we ha- instead we have a donut. And so then all day long, our, our energy spikes and drops, spikes and drops, spikes and drops. So at 3.30 in the afternoon, you're like, man, I just want to lay under my desk and take a nap. I'm dying over here. And that's simply a reflection of poor nutrition earlier in the day. So if you have the right breakfast, what I would consider the right breakfast is nutrient dense, high proteins and high fats, eggs and avocado, mm-hmm. a protein mm-hmm. shake, something like that is a great fit for the, the nutrients that we need to have amazing sustained energy throughout the day. And get this, this is the coolest part, Carol, is that if you eat proteins and fats, you are going to help let your body burn more fat during the day 
than if you eat carbs. Your body always preferentially burns carbs. So if you eat a bagel, you will not burn a single ounce of fat until that all, all that bagel is processed out. But one thing I just want to interject here is what you said about protein shakes. I've been doing protein shakes as my breakfast for over 40 years. And people, uh, you can imagine how old I am. People 42? are always wondering, what was that? 42? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Are always wondering where in the world I get my energy, which is basically endless. But my body is also conditioned. And so without even knowing the importance of it, my question to you is this. Why are people successful, if you want to use that word loosely, with fasting? Because I know a lot of people who do this, and of course, you already had addressed that. So expound on that a little bit. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with intermittent fasting. I've seen a lot of clients do that very successfully. The problem I have with it is that a lot of times if you don't eat breakfast, you skip right over it, which is totally fine, then you end up eating a bigger lunch or you're hungry or you're just like fixated on food during the day. And then again, you get that big energy spike. It's like the Chipotle burrito syndrome, right? You eat a Chipotle mm. burrito and you want to take a nap right afterwards. Mm-hmm. Now, if you can control your first meal of the day and still do a protein shake or do something that's high in, high in nutrients, vegetables, fruits, and then high in protein, you're going to be feeling great. It's an awesome strategy. And the reason people are so successful with it is because if you're cutting out one meal a day, you know, you're cutting out between 20 and 30 of your daily mm-hmm. calories, very easy then to – you know, if you do end up having a couple white claws or a couple beers with dinner or, you know, you end up with dessert, it's easy. It's like an insurance policy that offsets that that global calorie intake that you had during the day. So I think it can work. I just try not to promote it because um, I, I've seen the people that end up binging at lunch. What three pieces are integral in a morning routine if you want high performance? Now, you did kind of touch on that, but just expound on that again. Yeah. So, I mean, we can get real nitty gritty with this. And I have a, like a five day morning routine that goes into a, it's like a, it's like a pro, uh, course that walks you through my favorite steps of this, but from a more of a macro perspective, like forest for the trees, you want to have a couple different things in your morning routine that set the tone for your day. Number one, you want to eliminate decision fatigue. So hey. you said you, eat, you drink a protein shake every day for the last 40 years. You don't wake up Carol and stress about, Oh, am I going to have a blueberry Danish? Am I going to make pancakes? <laughs> You don't think about that, right? Because you know, it's protein shake time, baby. Let's go. So when you have that sort of like idea for your, for your morning, you don't, you can now take your energy, your decision-making skills and apply those to important things. Not what shirt am I going to wear? What am I going to have for breakfast? Wow. Carol, Carol, just between you and me, you can't tell because we're not on video, but I'm wearing a black shirt right now. I have nine of the same black shirts in my closet right now. I wear them all the time. Um, And all that does for me is just takes one decision off my plate. So I think that's one critical piece of a morning routine is script it out. Make so sure you're not going to. But I feel like a lot, you see a lot of the like, you know, people who are highly productive, the Mark Zuckerbergs, the, um, the what's his name from Apple, Steve Jobs, all those guys wear the same clothes all the time. And so I'm trying to, you know, success leaves clues mm. in a lot of ways. So how can we emulate the people who are doing, like playing really big, playing all out? The second thing that I think people need to be doing is think about what I call NUI work, N-U-I, which means non-urgent, important work. And if you can take, Mm. you can make a box and make a grid and have on one corner, non-urgent, important. And then on another corner, you have urgent, important, which is what we spend all days doing, putting out fires. And then below that, we have non-urgent, not important, and then not important, urgent stuff. And so if we can get the non-urgent, not important stuff and delete that, if we can get the, uh, non-important urgent stuff. We can delegate that. And then if we can spend just even a couple minutes during the day doing our non-urgent important work, that's the stuff that's going to move the needle in our businesses, in our life. That's reading a book, that's studying a course that might be doing your workout. It's, it's doing something that sets the tone Mm -hmm. for your growth, right? Mm -hmm. Cause Apple didn't necessarily, we'll stay with Apple, Apple for a second. They didn't release the iPod, thousand songs in your pocket, and then sit back and rest on their laurels and be like, Mm -hmm. good enough, we did it. Mm -hmm. They went right back to work and created the iPad, and then they created the iPhone, and they keep creating and innovating. They're doing stuff that is not, it's not urgent, but it's very, very important to their growth and the goals that they've set for themselves as a company. Again, why should we be any different? So I think a lot of us, we spend a lot of time working in our lives, in our business, instead of on our lives and on our business. And that gives you the time to do so. So even if you have to wake up 15 minutes earlier, it's still going to add up over time. That's the second piece. 
And the third piece for me is cast a vote for the person that you're becoming. We all have Excellent. goals. We all have play, like people we emulate or characteristics we want to have more of. So what would that person that you want to be like or become, what would that person do in the morning? And for some of us, it's as simple as we take our vitamins. You take a supplement in the morning. And every time you take that supplement, it reinforces, hey, I'm a health-minded person. I put my health, wellness, and vitality first. I do that first thing in the morning. For some of us, it's reading a book about relationships. I want to build a better relationship with my spouse. Maybe it's parenting. Maybe it's you want to be a stand-up comic. Whatever those things are, put that first in your day so you cast that vote for the person that you want to become. So every single day, you start off by doing something that's going to move you forward in business or in life. You cast a vote for the person that you're becoming from a like a, an identity level. And then we eliminate decision fatigue by having our first hour of the day scripted out. Wow, that's phenomenal. I love that. Cast a vote for the person you are becoming. Can you please explain this statement to me? Calories aren't just calories. They're communication. Yeah, and I'm, I'm glad. This is something that I think we get stuck on because, again, there's just so much information out there. But our bodies are so smart, Carol. They know so much. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And what we don't realize is that when we eat a carrot, it sends a different signal to our body than when we eat a piece of carrot cake. So I mentioned <laughs> earlier with the blood sugar thing, right? So if you eat a piece of, you eat a bagel or even a banana, like ostensibly healthy, right? Something that's high carbs and has some sugar in it in the morning. That signals to our body, spike blood sugar and our insulin level rises up to meet that. And then it drops us down shortly afterwards. But if we're having proteins and fats, the digestion is slower. Protein signals to our body, repair and rebuild. Fat signal to our body, low impact energy. So walks, reading, writing, working, podcasting, speaking, that's great, is like, is fueled by fat. And then carb signal to our body, hey, it's time, it's like it's go time. It's not, nothing, nothing wrong with carbs, but most of us aren't working physical jobs or running 5Ks every morning, so we don't need as many as we, as we intake as a society. So you gotta figure out, A, what, what do you want? Not just at your physical goal, like you know, maybe you wanna drop five pounds or look good in a tank top or build your biceps or whatever else. Yeah, but, but more than that, what do you want out of your life? How do you wanna show up for your family and your friends? Uh-huh. Carol, you said, you said you have boundless energy, and I love that, I love hearing that. Because those are the people in life that we look at and we're like, man, she gets so much done. She's so much fun to be around. She's a, she's a, an absolute, just an optimist and like a beacon of light in a, in a, in a world where we see, you know, political advertisements and things right. that are just kind of generally negative. So, okay. You want to be that person. How do you eat in a way that fuels that person? Right. It's not about, it's not right. crushing yourself with carbs and, and sugars and, and eating a can- handful of candy every time you pass by the candy dish. It's by being diligent and precise with what we're eating. But honestly, more than that, it's knowing the rules. It's knowing what levers you need to pull in your body, what knobs you have to turn, and what foods do that for you. And that really is part of the mindset, correct? 100%. Yeah, because if you don't, if you, if you don't think about food from a perspective of how is this going to make – how do I want to feel after I eat this? And you only think about it, what do I want to eat? What, do, what sounds good to me right now? then you'll never fully be able to grasp or embrace this concept. And how does someone start by changing that mindset if they really want to do it? I think it comes down it, it comes down to again the morning routine and it comes down to knowing what you want and why you want it. I kind of I kind of tend to turn down about 50% of the people who want to work with me. And 50% of the people I say yes to because it has to be a good fit for both of us. But what ends up happening is I ask someone, "What do you want to do?" And every everyone ostensibly says, "I want to lose 20 pounds." I go, "Okay, cool." Why do you want to lose 20 pounds? And I get vague answers that are like, well, I want to look better. I want to be healthier. I want to, you know, whatever. I'm like, okay, well, why do you want to look better and be healthier? And then it, then we start getting into the real answers. Well, I want to uh, be around longer for my kids. That's a good answer, right? You go, okay, well, why do you want to be around longer for your kids? <laughs> so, you know, you kind of just keep, keep digging at this. And they go, right. and eventually, and this happened to me the other day, Carol, and I was like, I was on the, on the fence being like, eh, I don't know. This guy doesn't seem like he really knows why he wants these things. And it finally came out and he goes, I want to be around for my kids because I want my kids to experience what I never had from my dad growing up who worked 12 hour days, who was super unhealthy and who died young. I go, whoa, that's so powerful. And when you have that why in the back of your mind, then no how is going to be too challenging for you. If I said he needed to, to grill tofu at five in the morning and go run three miles, 
he's going to figure out a way mm-hmm. to do that because mm-hmm. his his why is so powerful. Interesting. There's another question here that I would really I really believe that the audience needs to hear, and this is something that I made a decision to do a long time ago and I know how it changed my life and that is how do you know when you need to detox from sugar yeah this is something that I think uh, again just listening to your body and and understanding that your body is communicating with you all the time this is a this is critical and again just just one more piece in that that identity like of becoming the person who makes those choices and what we start, want to start doing is we want to start listening to our body in two different aspects. Number one, what kind of cravings are you getting and at what time? Mm. Because if you're, if you're eating a lot of sugar, what happens is there's bacteria in your stomach that feeds off of sugar. And when you feed something, it grows. So you, the more you feed ba- this bacteria, the more it grows. And it almost gets to the point where it, where it gains sentience. So at a certain point, that, sh- that bacteria in your stomach can start sending signals to your brain that say, hey. We need some more sugar. Hey, we gotta get, why don't you give us a half a donut? You know, hey, why don't you grab that candy? And we start getting these cravings. So you'll notice that if you start your day off with like a something high sugar or if you have a piece of dessert, you're going to want more sugar later. So the first thing is noticing those cravings. And the second thing, like we talked about earlier, is noticing your lethargy, noticing the times of day when you're like, ah, I am tired. What's going on with me? Mm-hmm. And if you're feeling those more than more than once a day, then it's probably time for a, a sugar detox. And it's it's not even as hard as it sounds. It's basically right. just remove some processed sugars. And then what I love to do is teach people how to work up to a 24-hour fast. And we talked about intermittent fasting before. Mm-hmm. This is I would call this more like prolonged fasting. But um, if, if someone is interested in more information, I have a, a free course on that as well. And all you got to do to go to that is go to thefreesugardetox.com. My husband and I had a conversation not that long ago. We were talking about discipline and willpower in our lives. And as you're talking, I'm thinking his answer, I really appreciate it. And I want to put that question to you. What is the difference and is it important to understand the difference between discipline and willpower? Ooh, that's, that is interesting. I'm curious. What did, what did you guys say? Well, I asked him the question. So the answer he gave me, I really appreciate it. And he said, discipline becomes habitual. Willpower is a decision. Ooh, interesting. Anyway, um, I thought okay. I'd throw that out to you because as you were talking about that in sugar, I thought once we made the decision, we didn't have any problem with willpower. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would, I would, uh, I would say that my, in my experience, it's, it's, uh, it's, I would agree with the discipline. It's habitual, but with willpower it feels like for me, it's a muscle and anyone okay. can have willpower to a certain amount of certain time. Right. But then if we flex our willpower in the morning, we don't know what we're going to eat. We don't know what we're going to wear. So we go, we go, okay, I'm going to have a protein shake. All right, got it. I did the thing. Now you've like, you flex that muscle. You've worked it a little bit. So when it comes to the, the PM and someone's like, hey, you want this chocolate chip cookie? You're more likely to not have the strength to do it because you've been working out that willpower all day. There was this study, Carol, where they left out a chocolate chip cookie. That's why I use this example it, on the counter. And in the morning, 88% of people could walk right past that chocolate chip cookie and not, not touch it. Willpower is high. And, but in the afternoon, and once everyone's gotten home from work, they've had long days, they've dealt with problems, they put out fires, only 18% of people would walk past that wow. cookie and not have it. Wow. Yeah, stark difference, right? So I feel like if you can, if you can transmute motivation or, or willpower and turn it into discipline, I think that's the, a mm, great good, step. Good. But I also don't think that's the end all be all. I think the end comes, Carol, from changing from being disciplined to having an identity around that piece. Because okay. I don't think we'll ever act outside of our personal identity. For example, I had a, I had a guy who did, I didn't end up uh, working with, but he basically was telling me that his identity, he is the funny fat guy. And that's how he sees mm, himself. Mm-hmm. So he, he cleans up everyone's plates when he goes out. He makes a big deal and make jokes about how much he can eat. And that's always been who he is. And he, and so, yeah, we could work together and he could do a, like he could do two months or three months and lose some weight. But if his identity does not shift, he's going to gain that weight right back. Cause in his head, he's always the funny fat guy. And while you right. can grip it and rip it for a, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, by the end of the day, we never act outside of our identity and how we view ourselves. Wow. That is powerful. Thank you for that. 
We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, you're going to share what you have to offer the audience. We're going to talk about your book and anything else that you would like to share. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Carol Graham would like to show you the path from misery to miraculous triumph in her fast-paced memoir, Battered Hope. She relates her determination to succeed as someone who experienced one horrendous nightmare after another. Gang raped and left for dead, loss of a child, husband falsely imprisoned, and cancer. Nothing could break her tenacity or faith. No matter what you face, heartache, loss, suffering, or injustice, Carol will illustrate how she became a victor the same way you can. The secret is to never, ever give up hope. Order your copy at Amazon or batteredhope.blogspot.com. Nate Palmer, and this has been exciting and a lot of revelation, I believe, for the guests who may be wondering about that word, that four-letter word, diet. And he certainly has addressed this from a, a point of view that I have never seen before. And I'm taking notes, and I trust you are too. And it's been exciting to hear what we can do with very little effort to get the changes that we want in our lives. So to continue, anything you'd like to share, Nate, and also please tell us about your book and what you have to offer the audience today. I mean, I got a lot of stuff, Carol. For, uh, I wanted to make sure I, I brought some gifts and to hook it up with you for your audience. So um, my to, to start off a little bit of a humble brag, my book is called The Million Dollar Body Method. And it's my second book. And I, I like this book way better than my first one because my first one is a collection of tips and tricks. Uh, but it's not transformational. It doesn't help anybody really at the long term. It's, it's a it's a fun little read, especially if you want to hear about uh, some traveling traveling stories I have. But the second book, this ends it ends up culminating in a 28 day program that anyone can do to start establishing really good baselines and habits to start changing their identity. It based it's based off of something that I call seven daily investments, and each of the investments stacks on itself. And if you can run these every single week, basically you'll have end up with we call we think of it as like 50 points. So at a glance, you can see your week, you can score yourself. How did you do out of 50? Mm. And with just that information, you can start deciding, okay, what do I need to change? And it's very, very cut and dried at that point. So um, if you want to check that out, it's on Amazon. If you love a hard copy, if you want an ebook or a Kindle version, I got that for free for you. Just go to getnatesbook.com. But uh, yeah, I just feel like it's kind of become my mission to try to get this information into as many people's hands as possible because I do mm -hmm. believe it's really powerful in its simplicity and ability to be sustainable. I don't want people to end up with that um, the biggest loser syndrome where you cut calories, you lose weight, you cut calories, you lose weight, and then eventually you get stuck in this pattern where you have to be eating only 1,100 calories and working out for an hour a day for the rest of your life. It sounds miserable. So let's do it in a sustainable mm -hmm. fashion, even if it takes us a touch a touch longer. Because if you're not willing to do it for 10 years, I wouldn't bother doing it for 10 weeks. Wow. Say that again. That's awesome. Yeah. If you're not willing to do something for 10 years, I wouldn't do it for 10 weeks. So that's why I would say skip a lot of these hardcore diet methods mm -hmm. where you just feel like you're suffering the whole time. Because if you can't sustain it, you're just going to regain that weight and you're going to put yourself in an even worse situation metabolically and for your health. Mindset and lifestyle change, right? It's got to be. It's got to be. And I'm like, I'm a big tactics guy. I love training. I love nutrition. But if you don't have that first piece locked down, this, the changes don't last. And for someone who's struggling with that, how do they get there? Start with the morning routine. And uh, one easy way you can do that is I have a five-day morning routine um, course. It'll teach you kind of my five-step process. One is, so like it's over five days, it stacks. So day one is one one day, or one or minute of, of ex exercise. So just a quick minute of jumping jacks or yeah. um, jumping on a trampoline or something like that just to get your blood moving. Two, day two is two glasses of water. Start your day off with hydration. Get yourself feeling better. You're going to be burning more fat that way. You'll have more energy. Like this is huge. It sounds so basic, but it's huge. Three is write down your three critical tasks for the day. What three things, if you accomplish them, would make you feel like you absolutely nailed it? You know, getting clarity in your head. Mm -hmm. Four is fortify your gratitude by sending a, a, a text or a note to someone else. So can you can you imagine, Carol, mm -hmm. getting a voice yes. note first thing in the morning yes. and someone's like, hey, Carol, I was thinking about you. I think you're amazing. Your podcast is incredible. We lo I love everything you do. Let me know if I can ever help you out. How would you feel getting that? I get that a lot. 
How do, and how do you feel? I feel awesome. In fact, it happened this morning. I thought, oh my word, bless her, you know? Incredible. You have amazing friends. That's fantastic. <laughs> and, and then the it, fifth day is the five to 10 deep breaths. And so like it stacks the whole challenge. So if you want to, if you want more about that, I have that, I'll have that link for you for free as well. Excellent. Yes. And that, that'll all be on the show notes. Tell us about your book. So yeah, the, the book, I, it's, it's basically broken out into like the, like I said, like the seven daily investments. I kind of go through in a way about how you can actually apply those to your life. Um, we talk a little about the morning routine. I just call it the high ROI morning routine, which is just a, like something you can do in 90 seconds every day to hey. with, with, uh, the minute of, of explosive exercise and, and 32 ounces of water. Like one of the best things you can do because between you and me, Carol, I'm really sick of uh, 22 year old life coaches who are like, Oh yeah, morning routine. All you got to do is you got to wake up and then you do 90 minutes of hot yoga that followed by 90 minutes of journaling. And then you're going to read an inspirational book. And then you're gonna listen to three podcasts. And by 1 PM, you can start your day. I'm like, I got two little kids at home. I got about seven minutes. What do you got for me? So I try to put something together that's like it's going to be powerful. That's going to be simple, and then you can always add on to it. I don't talk about journaling or, or breath work really, yeah. but but it's like uh, it's like Bruce Lee said: take what is useful, um, absorb what is useful, like reject what is not, and add what is uniquely your own. My goal is not that you follow my program to the exact letter 100% of the time for the re- for the rest of your life. It's that you take the pieces that are making big, uh, making a big difference in your life and your energy and your in your health. And you keep doing those because they're they're easy and they have a direct payoff. One thing that I appreciate about what you're sharing is that it's practical. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for saying so. And anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, I think that like the one thing that I I'll I'll, uh, I'll stand on a soapbox about. Well, one of like the several things I'll stand on a soapbox about. I have a lot of soapboxes, Carol. Okay. Don't, All right. You want to talk about the food industry? You want to talk about the food pyramid? Mm. Oh, you have another hour and a half. No kidding. <laughs> but one thing that I love to, to tell people about, especially people who have done this before and nothing has worked and it's been, it's like, it's just, they don't feel very good in their skin. They don't like, it's, it's kind of like, well, diet starts Monday, diet starts January. And it just feels so much easier to be like, I'm just gonna, like, I'm just gonna ride this out. I'm just gonna eat normal. The thing I would tell that person is you cannot lose at this if you do not quit. Good. You can't lose if you don't quit because really it's all about just putting one foot in front of the other. And even if you take two steps back occasionally, it doesn't matter because, you know, I'm not going to ever play in the NBA. I'm too old and I can't jump off the ground. But I I know that if in business or in my health and fitness, there's no there's no limiters based off of talent. It's all about your work and your consistency. And if you can just keep moving forward, even if it takes you 10 times as long and it's 10 times as hard, I can guarantee you, you're going to get there and I'm going to guarantee you it's going to be worth it. Your success is already guaranteed. What would you do if you, your success mm, is guaranteed? That's right. Good question. What's the secret weapon for fat loss? So we talked a little bit about intermittent fasting earlier. And I said that I wasn't a massive fan of the, what a lot of people will think of as intermittent fasting is that fast for 16 hours. You see fast from after dinner until like 12 um, so that, that's not my, my number one strategy. My favorite strategy and the secret weapon for, for fat loss is 24 hour fast, 24 to 48 hour fast one time per week with a 24 hour fast. You're getting about three or like more than three times the benefit of a single 16 hour fast. So the benefits become almost exponential. And then if you cut out seven, uh, one seventh of your daily calories by not eating for a full 24 hours, you are actually going to be able to have what I think of as like a nutritional insurance policy. So uh, the average out across the week is going to be a lot easier to maintain. So on top of that, I think that if you want to get more done in life, eating less is always a great option Mm -hmm. because when we eat and we digest food, we're pulling blood from our brain, from our extremities, and we're never going to be as cognitively on point or as focused when we're digesting. It's just not possible. So eating less to get more done is a great strategy. One thing you said there that I appreciate that you maybe had not have even thought about, and that is we feed our dogs and have for many, many years, and we don't have vet bills because we only feed them raw food. And one of the things that they recommend when you do feed your dogs raw food is once a week, 24 hours of fasting. 
They're really? getting yes, and I when you said that I thought, well, where have I heard that before? And that's exactly what we do. And you know what? They don't care because I know it makes them feel better. So that's yeah, so that's interesting. Yes, I've never heard I, of having your dogs fast. What a great idea! But that wouldn't be on on the kibble, you know, of course, because they probably would die. <laughs> Because mm. they're getting all those toxins and sugars and everything else in there. But on raw food, you know, it, it it's a totally different, uh, which hopefully that's what we're eating is a real food instead of plastic food. Ideally, so, yeah. yeah. Harder to come by these days. Exactly. No kidding. All right. Well, this has been awesome. Now, we're, we're coming to an end here, and I don't want to miss anything that you want to share with us. Anything else that you would like to share with the audience or any word of encouragement or whatever beyond beyond can't lose if you don't quit i feel like um my one of my core values for the million dollar body program and kind of in my own life is be inevitable and i think that this is something that really resonates deeply with me because i mean i even have this tattoo it says fact and non verba which means actions not words and the the idea of be inevitable to me means do what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. How often do we say, oh, I can't wait to write this book. Oh, I'm going to get in shape. This is the year that I do X. Right. And then we don't follow through on those things. And we treat our commitments like they don't have any weight or any value. But again, our identity, if, we, if, we are list, if we're always listening to what we say and we see if we execute or not. So if our word then becomes fairly meaningless to us, how can we ever succeed at anything? If, if we make a commitment – and then we don't follow through on it and it doesn't matter. Like w- there's no, like you talked about willpower and discipline earlier. You're never going to be able to create those things because there's no weight to it at all. So when I say be inevitable, it says it's not like you have to make a commitment and say, I'm going to do these things. I'm going to pursue this. But when you do, you need to make that a non-negotiable. It needs to be yeah, like, right. Carol, you said to me, you're going to write a book and you said you're going to be finished in June. I say, great, I'm going to RSVP to that ribbon cutting ceremony. Mm -hmm, I'll be at the the book signing because I know that you're a person that does what you say you're going to do when you say you're going to do it. I can set my watch by it. And that's the people that we, you know, I'm sure you can think of a person like that in your life right now. But those are the people I want to be around. Exactly. That's the person I strive to be like. Those are the people that I look up to and respect in the world. They're inevitable people. They do what they say they're going to do because anything else is – it reduces your word to being valueless. I think that one thing I want to do for the audience is to encourage them to listen to this interview two times. The first time to just get the general feeling and flow and understanding and concept that you are sharing and the second time to take notes and to start to implement those things because you said so many things that are so important you talk very fast and they may (laughs) not have sunk in i'm not saying that's a bad thing i'm just saying that people don't necessarily grasp it and this is such an important message i really want them to grasp what you are saying and to take those notes and to buy the book and begin to implement those changes into their lives and wow what a challenge. Get back to us in six months and tell us what happened. Several of those changes that you suggested already, you know, in our own lives in the last few years, it makes all the difference in the world. And we have the energy and we have the clear thinking and we have the, the mindset and we are people of our word, etc., etc., etc. So I'm excited. This has been awesome. And I thank you for everything that you have shared today. This is wonderful. Thank you. You have been an awesome guest. And as with anything in life, and also with our eating, never, ever give up hope. We can change. Would you agree? 100%. Thank you again, Nate Palmer, for being on Never Ever Give Up Hope. Thank you for listening to Never Ever Give Up Hope, featuring Carol Graham. Did you know that most people succeed because they are determined to? Quitting was never an option. Carol loves your comments and will respond to each one. So please subscribe and review this podcast. A rating of five stars would be outstanding and appreciated. Remember, if you are still here, there is always hope.